Okay, everyone. Uh, I got this uh, this problem come up on a banner ad the other day. Um, I won't tell you who the banner ad is for, but I just thought the, the problem was somewhat interesting. Now, it's obvious that you could take this x plus 1 over x equals 5 problem, solve for x, then plug what you get for x into this, and then get a number. And I will, in fact, go through that, that, those steps in a bit. But there's actually a clever solution to this that you can do, uh, which uh, might not be immediately obvious. It wasn't for me. In fact, uh, it didn't occur to me until after I'd run through the complete solve for x method. But uh, what we can do, and it may not be obvious why, but you'll see in a moment, is since we have x squared and x squared here, it's exactly the same, but the x's are squared, maybe we can square this and get a result without doing a lot of complicated calculation. So what do we get if we square x plus 1 over x? Well, by the binomial thing, we get x squared plus 2 times the first term times the second term. And then we have the second term squared, and that's going to be equal to 25. Now you're probably seeing exactly where the uh, cleverness is here. Uh, x times 1 over x is just 1. So that means we have here, and I'll just rearrange it a bit here as well, we have x squared plus 1 over x squared plus 2 equals 25. Now you can see, obviously, if we subtract 2 on both sides, we have x squared plus 1 over x squared equals 23. And that is, in fact, the answer, right? But how do we know that's right other than the fact that the algebra works? Uh, well, we can actually just do the, uh, the uh, complicated uh, solution here, because we don't know what x is. So uh, we could either solve for x in this or solve for x in that. This is actually going to be a little easier to solve, but it's basically the same, same process. So it might not be obvious, but this is actually a quadratic equation. So I'm going to section this off. And up here, I'm going to convert this to a quadratic equation. So we want to multiply by x to get rid of the denominator. So we multiply everything by x, we get x squared plus 1, 1 over x times x is 1, equals 5x, right? And if we convert that into the uh, form for the quadratic formula, we get x squared minus 5x plus 1 equals 0, right? Now, we plug this into the quadratic equation, we'll get 2 answers for this. Now, we know that uh, we have a single solution here. When we square this, we've got a single solution. Now, I'll leave it as an exercise to, to, the, uh, to the viewer to demonstrate that these are proper solutions for x plus 1 over x equals 5. Um, you know, what we're going to do is uh, now we're going to plug 
both of these into uh, the x squared plus 1 over x squared uh, setup, right? So, uh, because we need x squared, let's just square these so we don't have to do a whole bunch of, uh, uh, so we can take some of the complexity out of that. So, uh, so this means that we have x squared is going to be equal to and then it, uh, then we're going to have 5 halves plus root 21 over 4 squared. Now this, uh, by, we're going to just apply the binomial thing to this, because if you just plug this in your calculator, you get, this is an irrational number. So you're going to have a big error uh, accumulate in here. So what we have, we have here the, uh, when we do this, we square the first term, so that's going to be 25 over 4, right? And then it's going to be plus 2 times the first term times the second term. Now 2 times 5 halves is just 5. So we get 5 times and then our uh, uh, root 21 over 4, right? And then plus, and now we get 21 over 4 when we square that last term because it just cancels the, the radical. So that's 21 over 4. Now that actually gives us 46 over 4 plus 5 root 21 over 4. Now this is actually 23 over 2. Uh, so that's actually 23 halves plus 5 root 21 over 4. Now we can do the same thing with the with this other value for x sure there's uh, some fancy math uh, theorem or whatever that says that we're going to have a conjugate pair like this, but uh, whatever. This is what the working out gives you if you just do it in the simple, naive way. Now we have two values for x squared. We can just plug them in here and see if we what we get. So let's take the first one. So uh, the first one gives us, uh, I'm going to because, you know, we need to have things colorful here, uh, I'm going to do this bit in black. Uh, just to separate the steps here, it doesn't really signify anything. It's fairly random. Uh, anyway, so now we have x squared, which is, we'll take the first one, which is 23 halves plus... 5 times the square root of 21 over 4 plus and then 1 over 23 halves plus 5 times the square root of 21 over 4 right now we want to know what does this equal uh, so this is just a working out problem. Now we've got this problem here, we've got this radical thing on the bottom here, so what we want to do first is get rid of the fraction. We don't like the fraction here, uh, especially we don't like the, the radical on, on, in there, so we're going to multiply this by the conjugate pair. It's conjugate, which is the negative thing here. When we do that, we'll get a difference of squares on the bottom, which will eliminate that root sign. So. So that's going to give us 23 over 2 plus 5 times the square root of 21 over 4. And that's going to be plus. And then we're going to get, we're going to have the conjugate of this. It's going to be on the top of this fraction. So we're going to have 
23 over 2 minus 5 times the square root of 21 over 4 and that's going to be over. Now when we multiply this, when we square this, we're going to get 23 halves squared, uh, you, know, or, or, you know, when we multiply this out, we're not quite, we're not actually squaring it, but we're going to get the first terms multiplied, so 23 halves times 23 halves, that's 23 halves squared. Then we're going to add uh, the first term times the the second term, so that's going to be a negative, right? And then we're going to add the second term times the first term, and that's going to be a positive, but you know it's going to be the same, right? So they cancel out. And then we're going to add the second term times the second term, and that'll be positive, and it'll get rid of the radical sign. So that's the difference of squares, right? So anytime you multiply two binomials that only differ by the sign between the, the, the two terms, you get a difference of squares. So, so this is going to give me 23 over 2 squared minus, and then this squared, which uh, is going to be 25 times 21 over 4. Now, So if you take a look here, you'll see that this is going to, because the 2 here will square, this is going to uh, multiply out, this is going to become 529 over 4 minus 525 over 4. Now what does that, that, simp, that subtraction turn out to be? It's 4 over 4, or 1. So uh, this here... this equals 1. So that means we get no denominator left. So now that means this whole thing here is now equal to 23 over 2 plus 5 root 21 over 4 plus 23 over 2 minus 5 root 21 over 4. And now you see that the, this and this cancel out, which gives us, and then these two add together, so you got, well, that, well I'll just write that. Right, and that's obviously 2 times 23 over 2, and that's going to be equal to 23. And that is an answer, right? Now, you can do this whole thing again with uh, the other value for x squared and you will come up with here you'll have a minus sign here you'll have a minus sign uh, here you'll have a minus sign here you'll have a plus sign and here you'll still have a minus sign this will still work out to one uh, that's because we're, we're going to be multiplying we're going to be using the conjugate of it here so when we uh, rationalize we're going to get the same denominator so basically all we're doing is flipping the signs and the numerators here and so then we're going to end up with 23 halves minus 5 root 21 over 4 plus 23 halves plus 5 root 21 over 4 so the other one will in fact give you 23 now I'll just work through that here so that you can see it uh, Okay, so uh, if you work through here, you can see that both of the values for x give us 23 in our final equation, uh, if we do the working out this way. So this demonstrates that this answer here is correct. But this is an awful lot of work, This all this mess here, is an awful lot of work just to come to this conclusion. So anytime you see uh, a, a problem
problem like this one, you want to t sit back and think about whether there might be some trick that allows you to arrive at an answer much more easily. Uh, and uh, you know that requires noting things like the squares here versus the non-squares here uh, and observing that uh, the the two terms together cancel out when you when you square that binomial uh, so if you if you do if you observe that sort of thing then you can come up with with this sort of thing here now what that tells you uh, and uh, you know it's it's uh, quite fun is uh, you note that if you square this you're always going to get x squared plus 1 over x squared plus 2 equals the square of this number so uh, if you change the 5 to 6 uh, this should come up as 34 if you change it to 10 it should come up as 98 um, and what would happen if you if you wanted the square of this? Well, this and this. Well, this is just the same as this, right? So, if you uh, so if if you wanted x to the fourth and x to the fourth here, then you've got the same thing. You're squaring this. You're squaring this. So it. If you wanted to go, what's x to the fourth plus one over x to the fourth in this case, you'd square 23, which we determined is 529 over here, and you'd subtract two. Uh, my assertion, uh, and somebody uh, in the comments, go ahead and check this, but my assertion is that x to the fourth plus one over x to the fourth would be 527. Uh, that's my assertion here. Um, I could very well be wrong. I haven't actually worked it out, but I'm pretty sure I'm right because this is, uh, you know, this here is exactly what you'd get. Like, say you, you just substituted y in for x squared, right? And then it's y plus 1 over y equals 23. Well, that'd be exactly the same then as this pattern here. Yeah, you square it, you're going to end up with 23 squared less 2, right? So, uh, you're recognizing these types of patterns, this is, this is big. But there, there's another thing that uh, I want to, uh, to note here. Uh, when you're doing these complicated calculations, you might be tempted to reach for your calculator, like when you've got these two values here and then you need to plug them into, into a, a, an expression like x squared plus 1 over x squared, you might be tempted to just convert these to decimals and then carry the decimal with some number of digits through. But as you can see, if we even if we didn't know this, working through this, uh, we can note that uh, you can get rid of all of the, uh, sometimes you can do some algebraic tricks like multiplying by the conjugate and end up with uh, something like, a, and end up with a nice thing that cancels out the roots. Uh, so like in this case, uh, you end up with canceling out all of the square roots and you end up with a nice whole number as a result or a nice rational number even. Uh, so, you know, the fact that this actually uh, calculated out to 1 was really nice, but it wouldn't matter if it hadn't. Um, it, it still means that you can go ahead and calculate everything out, and then you can get an exact answer. Even if you still have roots left, you can get an exact answer, and then if you need a decimal, you can convert it at the end. And you might be surprised in a lot of situations. Converting to decimal early and then carrying along the calculation errors that you, you get from rounding it can substantially change the result. I, I know in one case, uh, I think it was in physics in high school, we were given a, a worksheet with a bunch of problems on it. And when I was doing the, uh, the problems, I always worked out the, uh, 
I figured out, okay, these equations go together. I'll put the equations together, do a bunch of algebra, and then figure out what calculations I actually need to do at the end of it. And in one of them, it, the actual result came out to a single division. Uh, whereas if you followed it through e equation by equation and calculated the numbers and then just you know did your rounding to significant figures and everything it was actually out by a factor of 10 and the teacher couldn't figure out how I got the answer that the worksheet had on it and he couldn't get it uh, until I, I sh until he looked at my work and he saw that I had put all of my equations together, uh, I, I, and uh, I think this was uh, electric fields and magnetic fields and that sort of thing that I put all the equations together and come up with. Uh, it did a bunch of algebra and a whole bunch of stuff cancelled out and I had one division left over in the end, and that gave me a single division which was actually. Uh, very precise. Uh, and this is the same sort of thing. You want to uh, to do this sort of thing to uh, to simplify it. And also, uh, you know here when I said I was going to bring that uh, the, t the denominator of this term here inside the root sign to make it easier to keep track of all my terms. The reason I did that is it got rid of one more big fraction bar. Um, that didn't necessarily make things any easier, but it made it easier for me personally to keep track of what was a, a piece and uh, you know and where. So, uh, you know that sort of thing. You know, ha having your uh, intermediate results improper like that is perfectly fine, as long as you're consistent with what you're doing and you don't get confused part way through. Anyway. Uh, the whole point of this is there's a real quick way to calculate it out here and we get 23 and now and then we can prove by solving for X and then plugging everything in to the to the second plugging both values into the second uh, expression and we get 23 for both of them and that demonstrates that um, this and this are almost certainly both right. Uh, anyway, uh, there you have it. Uh, that's uh, this particular uh, problem. Uh, and, you know, it's something else to consider when you get these types of problems on banner ads and stuff. There's usually a trick to them. So anyway, uh, this is uh, this is really all there is to say on that. It looks nasty, but it really isn't. Uh, and of course, when you get this, this type of thing, you can probably you probably just calculate out all the numbers in your calculator or something and get one or something like that. So, uh, which is why I didn't show the steps for simplifying this. I just did the multiplications here, and, and then it was obvious that we were going to get one. Uh, but you, if you're not convinced by that, work it out yourself. Anyway, that's all on this one. Uh, if you liked the video or you didn't leave a like or a dislike, you know, it'd be amusing to have a bunch of dislikes and no likes or something like that. You know, I, I would find that absolutely amusing. If you want to be notified of future videos, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. If you don't have notifications on, they're not going to notify you of anything. Go figure. Uh, if you have suggestions for other things like this for me to uh, tackle, uh, to work out or whatever, uh, leave a comment in the doobly-doo. Uh, if you think I've royally screwed this up, leave a comment. Uh, or if you just want to uh, to uh, discuss, you know, different ways to do it or whatever. Uh, and, you know, if you've watched this far, thanks for watching.